What's good YouTube Underworld 6667 coming at you with a kind of random deck profile. Now this is not going to be a deck profile where you're actually going to be able to see the full side deck of my actual side deck. This is actually the deck that I have been using on uh, Dueling Network um, for the past little while. Um, pretty much ever since uh, YCS Toronto. It was the deck that I said was going to win and it did. Dragon Rulers. Uh, in this case it is Dragon Plants. Um, I understand where are the plants. I know there's only three Three plants in the actual deck, but you know what? It's dragon plants because everything was plants when there was only four plants in the uh, the deck, and the plants are really good. They, they really do uh, support the deck uh, quite well. The debris dragons, um, I would say, are part of the plant engine. So, you know, you can either take it one way or the other. Same with the car troopers are part of the debris dragon um, portion, which makes it also a plant sort of kind of. I know I'm pulling at straws here, um, but. Let's get right into why I am going to be talking about uh, dragon rulers and dragon plants and dragons in general. Now, a lot of people are wondering why this is such a good deck and why you can pilot it um, with running a completely weird version of it. And that's, in my opinion, once again, this is my opinion, it's because the deck is uh, reactive and proactive. Um, you're looking at a deck that does a lot of things. You're not looking at a deck that just sits there and hopes that you don't have the answer. Um, unfortunately, I would use Evil Swarms as an, um, an example there. You're looking at a deck that sits behind a wall called Ophion and then hopes that you're unable to kill the Ophion. Now, they do have another broken card, which is Key Beetle, which really does help with the progression of the idea that they can just sit there and wait. Now, when it comes to dragons, however, you have a deck that is really reactive to your plays, so they can do things against your plays, like Maxis or like Swiss Scarecrows, to stop you from doing what you're trying to do. However, they are also proactive in that they're continuously summoning these big, huge dragons and possibly Synchros and Exceeds that are available in the deck as well. So it's really, once again, proactive and reactive. It can stop you from doing things, but it can also do things uh, just as well. Now, we're looking at my build personally and some of the reasons why I'm playing the cards that I'm playing. Now, if you notice, um, of course, we've got the two skill drains at the very bottom in the trap lineup. Now, of course, we have a dual purpose of this as well as you know, a dual purpose of pretty much everything that we're looking at in this deck. We have it defensive. It stops uh, your opponent from activating effects like Debris Dragon and that kind of thing. But it's also offensive because we can continuously play the dragons and not have to worry about them returning back to the hand and then we would have to resummon them. Now, one of the cool things about Skill Drain is you are able to play things like Colossal Fighter, which activate in the graveyard, so you don't need to be concerned about the Skill Drain inflicting upon the actual ability to use Colossal Fighter. Now, a lot of people are using effects to get rid of monsters, so Colossal Fighter, accompanied with Skill Drain, makes it a very hard wall to get over. Now, you're looking at a Colossal Fighter just reborning and reborning and reborning, whereas, you know, the Skill Drain is stopping your opponent from activating any effects that may destroy the Colossal Fighter by an effect. Nobody's playing things like Smashing Ground and Fisher and all that kind of stuff. I can't really say nobody. Most people are not playing Smashing Ground and Fisher and that kind of thing. Now, of course, you do have to worry about Dark Hole, but let's face it. Those are only two cards and hopefully your entire hand full of different options that you can use. Now, moving along, of course, we've got Trap Sun. Now, originally, when I was playing in YCS Toronto, I was using a Royal Decree um, Dragon Ruler deck. Now, I found that, once again, it wasn't reactive. It wasn't stopping anything. It was just sitting there and hopefully negating the traps that do come up. Now, Trap Sun, however, we can use it on things like your opponent's return from the different dimension, where they would have to pay half of their life points to do pretty much do a one-for-one. One. You're using your trap stun, they're using their return from a different dimension. Hey, that's a pretty good uh, payoff. You take off half their life points, and they do nothing. That's a good card. Now, you can also use it, of course, against your opponent's things like Dimensional Prison, or Bottomless Trap Hole, or things like that. I mean, it's a really great card. Not to mention, you can also use it against your own skill drain. That way you can activate your effects, such as number 11 Big Eye, maybe even the number 74 Master of Blades. Not entirely sure why you would do that, but 
once again, I mean, Big Eye plays and other different cards like, hey, even Scrap Dragon are really great things that you want to be able to access when you want to access them. Uh, Skill Drain is a very powerful card, trust me. And you have to know when to play it in order to play that in your deck. It's not going to be something you're just going to set and activate willy-nilly. Because you have to remember, hey, if they have a bigger monster than you do, and you only have skills to be able to get rid of those big monsters, you might not want to drain your own skill. Word play at its best. So once again, you're looking at my version. Take from it what you will. Um, you can take my full advice and play this deck, see how it works. But once again, you want to make a deck that is very proactive and reactive, not just sit behind a big, huge wall. Once again, it's up to you, but that's just my opinion. Thank you very much, YouTube. And as always, don't make those binder blunders. Those are the fucking bad.